Welcome to the IBM BPM 8570 demonstration on grid support. In this demonstration, I will create a simple user interface for requesting travel within an organization. To start with, I'm going to create a client-side human service called Travel Request. To start, we're going to add a variable to capture the information about the request. Our variable name will be called Travel Request. And the type of that variable will be the travel request business object that I created earlier. I'm going to go back to the diagram tab now, and we're going to rename the default coach to gather info. Next step, we're going to go to the coaches tab. We're going to click on gather info. And here you'll see the first difference compared to previous versions of BPM. We have a new option here called start with grid. This allows you to quickly get started with a grid on your new coach. I have an idea of what my layout should look like, so I'm going to choose the header footer starting point for my grid and click OK. Once the layout loads, you can see we have three cells within our layout, which can be populated with content from the palette. Although this grid is a good starting point, I want a different grid for my layout. In order to change the grid, I'm going to go into grid editing mode using these radio buttons in the top right corner here. Content mode allows you to add layout items to the canvas. Grid is the mode used to edit the grid. I'm going to click the grid radio button and we can see that the editor is changed to allow me to edit the grid. I want first name, last name, and employee number across the top. So I want to create two more cells. To do this, I can just hover over any cell or container within the grid and click the plus icon. This easily allows me to add a new cell. I will add another one. Next, I want to resize my cells so that they're evenly spaced across the top. In order to do this, I, all I have to do is hover over the right edge of a cell. As I drag, you can see there's a 12 column overlay. The available width of the coach is divided evenly into 12 columns. All cells are aligned to these 12 columns. I'm going to complete the resize of the cell and then I'm going to resize the next cell to be also four columns wide. Next, I want to split the middle area into half. I will do that using the same technique, clicking the plus icon to create that new cell. I'm going to leave the bottom cell as is. That's going to hold the buttons within our coach. Our grid is now complete, and I'm going to switch to the content view to populate it. I'm expanding the variables within my palette, and I'm going to drag and drop some of the fields into the grid. As I'm dragging, you can see that all cells are highlighted, even ones that have content already. Next, I'm going to add some of the fields dealing with the destination for the request. I'm going to add a map view to the right of those fields. The map is going to show the postal code area on a map. Finally, I'm going to drag my OK button into this bottom cell and create a companion cancel button. I now have my coach authored with a grid. The last thing to do is to set the binding on the map and then run. I will run the client-side human service to inspect the coach layout at runtime. If I adjust the width of the browser, we can see the columns within the grid dynamically adjust. If I make the browser width very small, we can see the layout does not look very good. Our next step is going to be to make the grid responsive to smaller device sizes. To make our layout responsive, we're going to go back to the editor and make changes to the top, middle, and bottom sections of our layout. To start with, we're going to deal with the top. I'm going to go into the grid editing mode and go to the medium device size. What we want is to have a little bit more room for each of these fields. In order to do this, I'm going to resize the cells on the medium device size. The horizontal span of the cells are device dependent. Finally, switching to the small device, I'm going to set the width of these cells to, to span the entire width of the device.
Next, we're going to make the middle section responsive. To start with, we're actually going to change some positioning and configuration options on the views themselves. On the map coach view, which is a custom coach view that I authored, I have a responsive configuration option for the default map type. We're going to set that to satellite on large. We're also going to set the height to be 400 pixels because we do have quite a bit of real estate on a large device. Next, on the medium size, we're going to change the height to 300 pixels. And we're going to configure the coach view to be road by default. Lastly, we're going to change the rendering of the is customer travel field to be a switch on medium and smaller devices. Finally, on the small device size, we realize we don't have a lot of real estate at all. So what we're going to do is hide the map completely on this device. To do that, we're going to click on the grid editing mode, select the cell that contains the map, and set it to be hidden on small devices. We can then take the remaining cell and resize it so it spans the entire width. We've now hidden the map on small devices and given the destination fields enough real estate. Finally, we're going to adjust the bottom section which contains the buttons. First, what we're going to do is change the layout of the cell. Cells can lay out their content both vertically and horizontally. Because these are buttons, we're going to lay them out horizontally. On a large device, we want them right aligned to match the desktop paradigm. On medium device sizes, I want the buttons to be larger and centered. In order to do this, I'm going to change the alignment. The alignment is a responsive setting, as you can see from the icon to the left of the field. Now that we have the button center aligned, we're going to go to the content editing mode. This will allow us to change the positioning properties of the buttons and make them wider. Previewing the small device size, we can see our buttons still look decent and we will leave it as is. To complete our client-side human service, we're going to add another screen to show the map when on a small device size. To get to this map, we're going to add another button to our layout. This button is going to be called View Map. We only want this button to appear on small device sizes. So we'll go to the visibility, we'll set it to be required on the small size, switch to large, and set its visibility to none. On the diagram, we're going to add a new coach to view the map. and I will wire it to the button I just created. When selecting view map, we're given the same dialog. In this case, we're not going to use a grid because it's going to be a very simple coach. We'll create an instance of the map coach view, bind it to the postal code, set its height to be 400 pixels, and that completes this coach. Let's run the client-side human service to see the final behavior. We can see on large, first name, last name, employee number, each share a third of the horizontal space across the top. Is customer travel is a checkbox. Our map is satellite by default, and the OK and cancel buttons are right aligned. If we adjust the browser width to medium size, we can see that first name, last name, employee number are all 50% of the browser width with employee number flowing on to the next line. The OK and Cancel buttons are now larger and aligned to the center. Customer travel is now a switch and our map is road by default. If I make the browser width even smaller, we are now at the small device setting. The map is completely hidden all of our fields are now spanning the entire device width, which would be very useful on a device such as a phone. If I click the View Map button, we are taken to another screen with the map showing. And that concludes the demonstration. Grid support is a simple and intuitive way of laying out the root content in your coach and coach views. 
which is both lightweight and responsive at runtime. Thank you. Thank you.